Hi, Michelle. Hi, Daniel. Welcome to the Integrative Health Coach Success Podcast. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here, Julia. Yes, we are excited to have you. I think that this is going to be a really exciting and interesting episode for lots of our listeners, mostly because a lot of people know who you both are, but I think they don't know a whole lot about you. Um, and you're both amazingly um, brilliant, kind human beings. And I can't wait for you guys to share a little bit of your story with our listeners. And then we'll do a little um, background in the life of EL support uh, with both of you. And I think that will be fun. So to start, um, with whoever wants to go first, Michelle, you can go first. <laughs> Let's do a little uh, kind of where were you prior to working for Equal Life? So you both do Equal Life support. Uh, where were you before Equal Life? Is health and wellness something you've always done? If not, kind of how did you get into it? Well, I start. I went to school for accounting, so I have an accounting degree. Um, I got a job right out of school at a specialty retail store doing all their book work. Um, which then slowly morphed into buying and selling and basically managing the place. So a very busy retail job for 28 years, um, which I loved, but I was always interested in health and fitness, but um, just kind of for myself. Took the probably 2014 or 15 um, integrated, Institute of Integrated Nutrition. I went through that year long course to be a certified health coach. And then I found Dr. Cabral by listening to a podcast that he was interviewed on. And then, of course, started listening to his podcasts in 2016. And the rest is history, you might say. Uh, it's just binging on those. And it's early 2018, I think it was. Caitlin reached out to me um, after I had joined the Facebook group and asked if I would be willing to help out because they were getting busy. And I jumped on board with that. So did yeah. my retail job and uh, helped you guys on the side a little bit. And that's just slowly morphed into full time. I left my retail job in 2020 and been full time here ever since. So. And I do equal life stuff and integrative health practitioner stuff. So, yes, yep, you're behind always... the scenes, on the front of the scenes, everything. So, do you remember what podcast that was? I think it was the Food Heals podcast. Okay. And you guys are the podcast. I call. I don't know if I've ever. Oh no, I have said this to you, Michelle. I think, but I think I've called you both the podcast ninjas. It's like if I need a podcast. <laughs> It's like, it's a, one of you help me find this podcast. You, you are, you're like the podcast ninja. I'm pretty sure I've listened to Dr. Carell more than the next 20 people combined. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, to yes. the IHP and all the podcasts. So, yeah. Yeah. And I do know that I think both of you, actually, this um, is true for Dr. Cabral always uh, kind of approached people based on what they were already like. You guys were active in the Facebook group just as participants. And I think that's how you got asked to come on board was because you were just naturally sharing your knowledge, naturally encouraging um and it was almost like it was something you loved doing. And Dr. Cabral finds that that kind of innate ability uh, is such is something that really can't be taught. And I think he probably, even though reach, you know, uh, Caitlin was the one that reached out to you. Dr. Cabral was probably looking at that Facebook page more often than maybe he does, you know, these days. Today, right. <laughs> but he was probably like, wow, these are really outspoken, positive, um, super helpful, impactful people of our community. And he was happy to bring you on board. Um, so thank you for sharing, Michelle. Daniel, what's your story? How did you get here? Were you doing health and wellness the whole time? All on my own. So my journey was very lonely. I, I didn't have any friends that I could turn to. They would have thought I was absolutely nuts. Um, but I had just, you know, back in 2010, I had hit rock bottom and I needed, I needed an outlet. So I just started researching and reading articles and then books. Um, one of those was a pretty controversial book. And actually, I could probably say it on this podcast, but it was a guy by the name of Kevin Trudeau, Natural Cures They Don't Want You to Know About. And I don't typically recommend it because it is a controversial book, but he just kind of gives his perspective on how he came about this information with his certain societies that he was in. But it's funny how you just brought up the fact that someone probably noticed our input while being in the groups and natural support, because that was a really big part of my entire journey. So back then when I had learned all this information, wherever it came from, from various sources, there was no 
there was nowhere to share it. Like my personal Facebook, nobody wanted to hear that stuff. They're like, what, what is that? I want to see pictures of the kids and all the, all these, these other humoristic uh, infographics and no, nobody was really into health. And so I had just become this storage unit of all this health related information. And I don't know if I have time to get into it, but obviously part of this story started when I was speaking on the phone with you about my labs and you had said that Dr. Capra was probably coming out with the course soon. I was one of the first 100 to join it. And then right there from the start, I realized this is an outlet. Like this is where I can share. Cause I started seeing all these questions and Michelle, I'm sure you remember in the detox group back when I, when I first started, I can't remember, I remember what, what my first you. question is. <laughs> I think it was about CBD or something, but um I, and I just start, I would just get in the groups and start reading other people's questions. And I was like, oh, well, that's a simple question. I'll just give my input, give my two cents. And then the responses were, were good enough. And I think in the background, Michelle was on a mission to, yeah, let's enhance this free support. And so she, she say, oh, the support you're giving is great. You keep it up. And, and obviously some people did in, enjoy that. And so it just became a thing for me because it was natural. It's something that I'm like, wow, this is finally all this information I get to actually say, and people do want to hear it. So I just continued with that. And then as it kind of, as I progressed into the coursework and I started doing the same thing in the coaches group, then it just kind of became obvious. And so after I completed the course, I had gotten off Facebook for maybe two or three months because I was going into new studies. And then Caitlin had placed that call back and she said, Hey, you know, how have you been? We we really missed that support that you were giving. How about you come back and and we'll give you a, a, a salary to to take care of our, our other members? And so that's kind of how that happened. But I think your original question was how I got into this, and it was just going back to that 2010 when I when I hit my body. It was pretty much just allergies for me. And I didn't think, uh, I guess I won't get too deep into it, but it was a really rough time. And it was just this one Wednesday night at two in the morning. I couldn't breathe through my nose. It was like the worst it's ever been. And I turned on the TV. There was an infomercial playing this guy talking about natural cures. That's that Kevin Trudeau guy I mentioned to you about. And he was giving his book away for free because he had already sold so many million copies. And so I ordered the book. And the last time I read a book before I placed that free order was probably 11th or 12th grade. Uh, and, and this was a, a nonfiction book. And I just chewed through it like candy. It was like 350 pages, changed my life. Mm -hmm. And I started changing the way I was eating with the supplements I was taking. I went through my first cleanse probably like six or eight months after it was a, it was a colon cleanse and, and it was fairly simple. The only thing you, it, it said not to do was to eat meat. Uh, and the girl that I was dating at the time, she was willing to do it with me because she knew I was just trying to get rid of my allergies. And as we were reading the pamphlet, it said, you know, no, no meat. And I legitimately turned to her and I, I said, listen, serious question. Do, do you think we can die? Because, <laughs> because meat was a large part of my diet, you know, ground beef, burgers, tacos, hamburger helper, hot dogs. That, that was what I lived on. And now this is the saying, I can't have any of that. How is that even possible? And so it gives kind of insight as to how little I knew back then, but wow. And, and today I've gone six days uh, on a complete water fast. So I mean, you learn so, so many different things along the way. And that just kind of really what brought me here to where I am today. Well, good. We're glad you survived the the few days without, without the meat or <laughs> we would yeah. not have been graced with your presence for this long. <laughs> so do you say six days you're on day six of a water fast right now? Not right now. I've, I've oh. done it before. So I, oh, I started wow. maybe two or three days and then I'd go to four yeah. and five because I knew that there was benefits to fasting. Yep. I didn't know exactly what at the time. So I just trying to Kept doing it little by little, and and the longest I've been was like six or seven days, and one yes. well one of those was just recently. Michelle knows about, but uh, but yeah, yeah. And 
again, I think that this is kind of like what we help the community with, with the support that you guys give. And that really is, I think that the community aspect of it, right, is finding you found something that you were able to, okay, these are people that are like speaking my language. Same thing with you, Michelle. This is like somewhere where I can go and feel like others know what I'm talking about, what I'm passionate about, but also it feels good to give in the same way that it feels good to be a part, right? And so when you're of that just kind of like general nature, um, which obviously both of you are, like those communities just feel like they lift you up. And it's just amazing how you guys got started that way, Michelle. When when Michelle said, I remember admitting you, <laughs> you know, Michelle like clicked, oh yeah, okay, we'll let you into the group. Um, and it's just to look back, you know, at how, and, and again, I remember reviewing your labs. It seems like such a long time ago when you said, when one of you said 2016, and I was like, how long ago was that? That was five years ago. And I was like, nope, it was six years ago. <laughs> um, very fast. Yeah. And the whole company has grown so much, but our community has grown so much. And I think that that's one of the most important things about like what we do at Equal Life that you guys have such a huge part of. Um, and so when I found out we were going to get to chat, <laughs> that was because I, I think like you're almost like those like background unsung heroes where, you know, you're doing some of the background work, but you're probably changing more lives than, you know, you ever could imagine just by having, right? Because you even said it too, Daniel, like imagine if you had a Facebook group when you were down and out and at your lowest point, right? There's probably other people who are down and out logging into those Facebook groups and getting the kind of support that honestly can be life-changing. That definitely would have been phenomenal if I had that back then. Yes. Yeah. And, and again, we all just, as human beings, we thrive off of community. We're better when we're around people that understand what we're going through, know what we're going through, empathize what we're going through, have some sort of like stake in the game and can understand it, um, I think is super important. Um, okay. So let's switch gears a little bit and <laughs> talk about kind of behind the scenes. I would love for you guys to kind of share. So what is one of your favorite, we'll kind of go um, back to you, Michelle, I'll have you share your favorite thing about um, doing Equal Life and IHP support, um, either one, because you have a, you do moderate the um, groups for like the IHP lives and all of that. So I think you have a taste of just our regular community of people who are just doing protocols and they're kind of in the whole Equal Life thing, but then also IHPs who are then going out and doing this stuff on their own. Um, do you have kind of a favorite part of, of what you do with us? I really don't. I just enjoy because I do so many different things. And I think that's why I enjoyed my job for 28 years in retail. I did accounting. I did buying. I did selling. I went on buying trips. I managed the place. And I took out the garbage. I mean, I, I did everything. So and the same thing here, I kind of got my hand in a lot of different things. And I enjoy that. And, and to go back to your comment before about how helping people is so good for our souls. And, you know, when I started doing this, even two hours a day, it, I was, you know, for a couple of years there, I was going through some rough times on my own personal life and to be able to help others. And it really boosted me up and helped me and to see those comments come back and, and thank yous and you're wonderful. And I can't, you know, believe you you're doing all this. So those type of comments really helped me and just to be able to help people. I mean, in all aspects, whether it's behind the scenes or in the Facebook group or an email, you know, I'm helping with customer service, you know, health emails. Um, I just truly enjoy helping people. So it, all of yeah. it is my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there's a saying, I think, or some somebody or something that I've seen that's, that's basically like, if you're having a bad day, um, go out and be of service to somebody else. And like, it's, it's totally true. I, my kids, always, you know, say like, oh, mom, do you have to go to work? Do you have to, they use like the words, like, do you have to, oh, is today the day you have to do your podcast? And I'm always like shifting their mindset of like, no, I get to do my podcast today and I get to help people today. And I make sure that they know what I do for work is not like this torturous nine to five of, because like, there's so much more to life than just that. Um, I, I, you know, have mentioned on this podcast before, if I hit the lottery tomorrow, I would probably continue to do this 
-hmm. even if I didn't have to for an income, I would just help people who couldn't afford it. And I would do it for nothing because it does have such like an important part of, of my soul, uh, as far as, you know, lifting it up and, and what it does, um, there, but also in the same respect to what you said about kind of having your hands in a few different things, it keeps things interesting, right? You're not like going to work every day, doing the same spreadsheet or working on one same task. You're able to kind of keep your mind sharp. You know, you're learning something over here while you're supporting someone else over here. And it's a great way to kind of stay engaged and, um, and busy. Yes. Let's yeah. keep the brain going. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, Daniel, what's your favorite part? Do you have one? I probably have many. Um, I'd say my top two were the connection behind the scenes, because there's, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. If you're, if you're on the front, just asking a support question, you may have no idea what goes on to try and make sure that we get you the best, best answer possible. And there's, there's many times where, you know, maybe I can't find a podcast or, or I need my own support on a question that I have. I mean, Michelle and I, we, we stay connected on the time and obviously we have, we have a whole team of people in the background, but just the, the fact that I can reach out to her, she can reach, reach out to me rather quickly um, because we, we, we carry a lot of, a lot of weight. Some of the questions that we're answering are very personal and people are waiting on responses. Mm -hmm. One hour is probably feels like five or six hours to them. And so we're doing our very best to get them a response as fast as possible. And not just that, but to make sure that it's accurate. And the second, the second most important thing is probably how much credit someone relies on our answers. So there's, there's a lot of times, and it doesn't matter what channel it comes through. It could, it, it could be one of a, a variety of channels, but whatever question it is, I notice a lot of times, like, this is a very Googleable answer, if that's a word. Mm -hmm. And the fact that like, cause you can view this two different ways. You, why wouldn't you just Google that for a quicker response? No, 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 no. They're coming to you. They trust you more than they would Google. And so that that's a very key point because you have to make sure that your response is not only accurate, but also on time because, you know, you can easily go to Google and pull something up in two seconds, but how do you know when to trust it? And so these people are trusting the community and the support team to make sure that they get their best answers. So those are probably my two favorite out of all. Yes. Yeah. Such a good point because like the trust, right. Um, you know, these are people, this is a community, this is like an umbrella, a company that feels like, you know, whoever is kind of working and we, and we see it all the time, right? Like we have an internal company system where we share, you know, client success stories or stuff like that. And we can see that people are in eternally grateful, um, so much more often than not for everything that, you know, people will write in and they'll say the whole company from Michelle and Daniel with their Facebook support to, you know, the customer service team through email to the coach that I met with, you know, to, oh, I had a question about this and spoke to Dana and Chip. there's all of these connections that people make to people in the company. And, and the, the fact that they trust every single step that we offer is it's huge. And I think the trust component is then what, what allows us to help people because you're right. If they trust us, maybe more than Google, which um, that's probably a good thing. They can then, you know, feel like, okay, I'm going to, you know, rely and, um, and hold some validity in this answer. And I'm going to then take the next steps. And so then they're being more proactive with their help because they feel good about the resource that they're getting their answer from. Um, and I do think, you know, again, another like saying, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. And I think that's what we do so wonderful here, which is that everybody on this team and going back to the original point, which is that you were both doing this for free, just out of the goodness of your heart, because you loved supporting people. We are all people who just care very deeply about Dr. Cabral's mission, about just the mission of people getting well, even if we, you know, think this and not that, just simply about caring about others' health and helping people have a better day. 
like it's just it's what I think makes us all so special. And I really can't think of anybody on her our team who doesn't share that, honestly. And that's where that's where the reward is for us too. A lot of jobs, your reward is completing the projects that you have on time before the buzzer hits. Mm-hmm. But for us, the reward is the responses that come back. Thank you very much for your help. Wow, mm-hmm. this this product helped me or this helped you know, get rid of X or, or whatever it is. That's, that's what we live for. That's what makes you feel successful that you're doing your job to the highest degree. Yeah, exactly. And it's what kind of makes it all, all worth it. Um, for sure. Yeah. Especially, yeah, I know it's true for me and what I'm doing is client facing, but we, what you guys are doing is helping the client after the conversation, right? I'm the health coach that they meet with and like that's live, but without having somebody to kind of bounce things off of or have questions answered after, you know, they're just not, they're not just left in the dark. Right. Whereas, you know, some of these companies just give you a test and you get the results and then it's like, okay, great. Now what? Um, and so I think that kind of high touch support is, is so important. Agreed. Yeah. Um, all right. So I'm going to ask you guys another question. <laughs> and when it comes to kind of um, questions that we get, like there's definitely always times where some things we can't answer, right? Like we can't use, can't talk about specific diagnoses and we can't talk about, you know, medic in medical terms because none of us are doctors and we're not practicing medicine. Um, and when, when you kind of approach a client with that type of response, or you kind of let them know, listen, like, I'm going to have to refer you to your doctor. And are there ever times where you actually now know the hardest thing about that for me? Cause I basically just admitted it because that's a hard thing for me. So when I have to kind of tell a client, sorry, like this isn't something that I can further discuss, even though I might have the answer, but it's just out of our um, our realm of practice. It's just not what we do. It's out of our regulatory guidelines. That's something that's hard for me. Are there aspects of what you guys do that, that you find hard or that you kind of find like, oh, I wish I could do this, even though I know I can't. We'll start with you, Daniel. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm right with you on that one. Um, there's certainly many times because I'm, I have several support channels that I, that I give support to. And sometimes, or oftentimes people are very excited to continue receiving this type of free information to help them support in their journey. But then they hit a brick wall because there's something that I can't say or do. It's not within my scope of practice. And at times I feel like they're just, they're like, man, why, why wouldn't you just help me? This, this one little step, this one little thing is, is really going <laughs> to do it for me. But you just don't understand that the, the minute I say that you could have an adverse reaction and then what? you're unwell, I'm liable. And, and that's the whole reason that we have kind of this scope of practice, because it doesn't matter how, you know, I, I could have seen something that has been safe in 98 people out of the last hundred that I helped, but that doesn't make it okay for me to say that it's healthy for everyone because we're all different and unique. And I can't, I can't reach over outside of that just to try and help you a little bit more. I had safety comes first. I can't recommend something that, that could potentially harm you or, or someone that you know. So uh, that yeah. that is definitely the toughest part for me because all you want to do is just answer every question that they have. But sometimes there's roadblocks and there's roadblocks in place. I, I think it could be justified that some of those could be changed with law, but the majority of it is to protect people. Right. And we have to make sure we abide by that just, just for that one purpose alone, do no harm first. Right. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, making sure that we're doing everything that we can to continue to practice and support people the way that we do. And we're not getting ourselves, you know, in hot water by saying things we're not supposed to, or giving information and help that we know might be beneficial, but also like, you know, is out of our scope of practice. And sometimes it can kind of feel like, Oh, like, but I just want to like say it and help. And even though you want to, um, you know, yeah, you can. Um, all right, Michelle, do you have one? Same thing. You know, 
Yeah. Back when I first started working in the Facebook group, we used to be able to say so much more mm-hmm. and then regulatory things and it got a less and less and less. Um, and it is frustrating because we know what to say because mm-hmm. of everything we've learned through Dr. Cabral and other resources. We know how to help these people or what could work. But like Daniel said, we can't even say those things, even though they work for most people. Mm-hmm. We can't say those. We can't even recommend a lab. You know, yeah. so thank goodness Dr. Cabral has done what, 24, 2,500 podcasts now that he does give the answers and I can link those up and they can figure it out there. It's just frustrating because people are sick. They're unhappy. They're not feeling well and they want the answer now. And I feel bad when I give them five podcasts to listen to and I know the answer's there, (laughs) but that's the way it has to be, unfortunately. So we can't have the liable, you know, coming back at us. So, right. Because we can still do more. Mm-hmm. with the with the regulations than if our yeah if our facebook group got shut down right yeah i mean it's yeah um and so following those guidelines is just as important for their well-being because then we'll still be there to support them um than if we you know kind of say or, or do the wrong thing and sometimes i think too you know we can kind of think of like I would just love to make it easy for this person to, you know, get X, Y, Z or feel X, Y, and you know, Z. But sometimes too, just giving them the information and letting them kind of come to the realization, it can almost be more powerful for their own journey um, in and of itself. Because, you know, like Daniel, if you never read that book and like, that was like your pivotal moment, right? Like what happens if you were watching the TV that day and you're like, this book's probably trash. Never mind, I'm not gonna order it. You know, it's kind of like we take the steps that lead us to kind of what, where we're supposed to be. 100%. Yeah. Um, okay, so do you guys, do you have a favorite <laughs> podcast? <laughs> Since you know them all, are there ones that like you think, to yourself, you know, oh, this, or that you like find yourself linking um, more often than not, or ones that kind of have, you know, know we don't need the number, but just like general ones uh, that he's done. Well, I love the ones on the toxicity and how your body becomes, holds onto these toxins and why and how to detox. I mean, so many, I mean, reading the rain barrel effect is, it's huge, but there are podcasts that condense all that too. So that's a big one for me when people just don't know where to start. It's like here, you know, the free assessments is also a great resource, you know, people that doesn't cost a thing. So, so yeah, there's so many great ones. It's, it's hard to say a favorite. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. What about you, Daniel? I think my favorite of all time, and I, I bet Michelle, if I gave you a multiple choice answer, you'd probably get it too, because I've talked about it enough, but podcast 998, I think it's called the six stages of the disease process. That's one of the ones I link up to. (laughs) That was, man, that was a spiritual awakening and understanding. I mean, eight star show. Like when I, when I first heard that, and I think the reason for me is because I was really trying to make sense of all this, you know, and in the beginning, I was in the very beginning back in 2010, I was, I was like, wait, so are there cures for the disease or is there not? Because some people say that there is, so maybe there is, but we just can't say it. I, I was very confused. And now obviously I have a very good understanding of the fact that only the body can cure itself, right? We just have to put it in the best position. And I, I, I noticed that many conditions were talked about very often, whether it's hypothyroidism or diabetes um, or, or type two diabetes, but I didn't hear a lot on type one and various other conditions. I'm like, I wonder why these aren't talked about it, uh, the most, or, or what about this new disease that I've never heard of, or these idiopathic things. And that podcast answered all that Mm. because he, and, and I like, he, every now and then he gets really aggressive and I, I, (laughs) that attracts me. And that's why that book. When he gets like fired up, you mean? Yes. Yeah. Yes. (laughs) Um, that, that book by Kevin Trudeau was an aggressive book. It's controversial. It, 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 it stirred the pot. And in in that particular episode, I'd have to paraphrase, but he he just he just kind of says, you know, name your condition. It doesn't matter what it is. 
This is how you have to look at it. Because remember, it's just a name and we have to give it this name in order to diagnose it so that with insurance, we can prescribe a drug to it. So it doesn't, doesn't matter what it is. Yes, there's always going to be intricacies and certain lab tests to test for different things and markers to look at. And that's all great and dandy, but it's, it's the point. It's the fact that you don't get so wrapped up in your specific name that you lose sight of the big picture because the big picture is you have toxicities, you have deficiencies, you have imbalances. And, and until you address those, you're never going to move forward. So I'd say that's definitely my favorite. As far as podcasts that I link up the most, it's probably, well, 760, the viral podcast. Of course, that would make sense mm -hmm. kind of in today's time, but. Um, yeah. Yeah, we get people all the time that, you know, will write in or, you know, you might see it in support, Michelle, or, you know, even you, Daniel, or they kind of write it on their intake. And I see it where people are like, oh, have you ever dealt with somebody with X before, you know, name the disease, whether it's, you know, autoimmune condition or, and sometimes it's like, Ooh, um, yeah, actually, um, yeah, we've dealt with that many times. And then some, it's like, Oh, this is actually new, but there's really not any in that realm of like quote diagnoses that we don't, we don't really just don't address them any differently. It's all root cause. Like what is the, what, what are we dealing with as the most toxic issue? Where is the biggest deficiency, right? And if we get rid of the toxicities and we increase the deficiencies, the body becomes um, much more balanced and is able to kind of quote unquote, you know, like you said, Daniel, heal in and of itself. Um, and so, yeah, it's that would, I would say is probably like a big pillar of what we do, that podcast episode, just in general, right, of encouraging people to identify their toxicities, their deficiencies, and and rebalancing their bodies, because it's kind of what it's, what it's all about. For sure. Yeah. Um, all right. What about <laughs> other, so we talked about Dr. Cabral and his podcast, but do you guys have other podcasts that you love or listen to other books, social media? Sometimes I ask um, guests kind of other social media accounts or other podcasts, books, um, authors that you just generally love. Do you have any favorites, Michelle? Probably the two podcasts that come right to mind. Um, it's Dr. Hyman and Dr. Mercola. Mm -hmm. Um, I've got a lot of them that I just don't have time to listen to anymore, but, um, and the nutrition diva, which actually I think she used to work with Dr. Cabral, but hers are very short, like 10 to 15 minute, um, you know, once okay. a week podcast, I, I'm trying to think of her name, Monica Reinagel, I think oh, they okay. worked together years and years and years ago, but, um, so yeah, those are probably the top three that I, when I do have time to, besides all the other stuff I'm doing. Yes, I know we were talking about podcasts in our coaching meeting earlier and everybody's like rattling off these podcasts that they listen to. And I was like, I chimed in. I'm like, wait, when, where, when are you guys listening to these? Anybody want to give me a, <laughs> give me a pointer of where to fit these. And I have people that somebody just recently sent me a Joe Rogan podcast. And I think the time on it was like three hours and 20 minutes. And I was like, guess what? I'm not listening to. <laughs> like wow. three hours is there a time stamp you want me to like fast forward to because i'll listen to like 20 minutes of something but three hours i don't think so yeah. um so yeah and that's uh, what i love too about dr cabral's but also i'll have to check out the nutrition diva because i like short sound bites i like 15 20 you know 40 minutes max is usually um yeah what about you daniel um new frontiers in functional medicine with kara fitzgerald I listened to Redefining Medicine. Um, I'm trying to find a host on that. That was, I haven't heard a show from them in a while, but wow, I chewed through them. That's all I used to listen to all day long. Um, looking here at my phone. Oh, Rankin Chatterjee has a show, Feel Better, Live More. He has a great show. And uh, Datis Karazian just recently started his podcast just a couple months back. And so those are oh, pretty much- Oh, he did start one? Yeah. And oh, a lot okay. of those are coming from his <clears throat> YouTube channel. They're, I guess, editing them and moving them into categorized shows. Like I think the last category was either hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's. Could be all linked into one category, but- it was just launched. Well, it could have been a little bit further back, maybe six months ago. It was a pretty new thing, but 
when I get around to listening to podcasts, usually it's in downtime weekends or, or late evenings. Um, it's probably one of those. I do listen to a few others, but they're not worth mentioning since they're a bit more technical and specific, but yeah, they have All some right. great content. Yes. Yeah. Lots of good information out there. Thank you so much, both of you. This was an absolute blast. I know it was, I, you guys were a package deal. It was like, all right, Michelle and Daniel will come on. They're, they're going to do it together. And I was like, great. I, I love a party. <laughs> so thank you so, so much for being here. This was such a fun episode. And I think our listeners probably um, enjoyed getting to know both of you a little bit better. Um, so I appreciate you being here. You're, You're welcome. welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes. Okay. We'll talk soon. All righty. Thank you.